My name is Dan Mornoff. I'm the president of the local chapter of the Federal Society. I want to thank you all for coming for what I, I think is going to be a pretty great event. Uh, we do appreciate that you're here. Let me mention right up front that for those of you who are lawyers, if you sign in at the sign-in sheets at the door, we will make sure that you get CLE credit for this. So please do let us know that. There are very few people who can claim that they have served as judges, executives, and legislators. Uh, we are lucky today be, to be joined by someone who can say that he's done all of those things. Uh, Senator John Cornyn uh, served as a district court judge, as a member of the Supreme Court of Texas, as our attorney general, and of course is currently, uh, well, a senator. Uh, I can actually only think of one other person who's had all of those roles, and I'm happy to report that Senator Cornyn has done a better job in each of these roles than Abner Mikva did in any. Uh, with that said, uh, he is now a leading voice on the Judiciary Committee, where he was a prominent supporter of, the, of a number of nominees who stood for the kind of understanding of judicial restraint and its appropriateness uh, that this institution certainly appreciates, uh, including, of course, Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Alito. He played a huge role in opposing the filibusters of questionable constitutionality of President Bush's judicial nominees, including Priscilla Owens. Uh, more recently, he's emerged as a leading opponent of judicial activists nominated to the bench and the use of foreign jurisprudence or uh, norms of international law as sources of valid law and American constitutional development. We're really proud to have him here. I hope that you'll give, join me in giving a warm welcome to our soon to be senior Senator, John Cornyn. Well, thank you, Dan, and it's uh, good to be here with all of you today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, one of the great things I've always enjoyed about the Federalist Society is that uh, members of the Federalist Society aren't afraid to have a good debate and to uh, defend their position, whatever that position may be, based on the principles, based on the merits. And, you know, that seems uh, kind of far-fetched sometimes in the debates we have in Washington, D.C., where uh, spin doctors and spin control seems to count for more than the, than the merits of a, of a particular position or debate. But I want to just say, in addition to being glad to be here with all of you, I'm really glad to see uh, a couple of folks who used to work with me, uh, Judge Reed O'Connor um, and his wife Tammy are here. It's great to see you. And Chip Roy, who's now Assistant U.S. Attorney. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, folks in my position depend on really uh, top quality staff. And uh, Reed and Chip did a great job for me when, I, when they were on the Judiciary Committee staff and helping me through all these battles. I always tell my staff <clears throat> their job is to make me look good, no matter how hard that is uh, on any given occasion. But they, uh, they really did a, a great, great work. But the Federalist Society, of course, is, has, a, come, has a proud tradition of uh, starting in the early 80s when many conservatives despaired over ju judicial activism occurring at the highest levels of our, of our judiciary particularly the United States Supreme Court. And uh, we know law professors uh, mostly uh, tend to come from a uh, left-leaning bent and write law reviews and come up with creative legal theories about how the written word does not mean what it says or trying to justify some alternative interpretation that is not tethered to something you and I might call law as opposed to a, a legal theory. So, back in 1982, a group of law students uh, began to fight back. Uh, they believed that the role of the judiciary was to say what the law is, not what it should be. Doesn't seem like a far-fetched concept. And I guess the question for all of us, whether we're judges or legislators or practicing lawyers, is, to me, it boils down to this. It's not what's the right answer. It's who gets to 
answer the question. Is it a judiciary who takes on the role of a super legislative branch or maybe philosopher in chief uh, that tells us what's good for us, notwithstanding what the legislature or elected representatives have said? Or is it a more, but uh, to use Justice Roberts' terms, a more modest role? One that recognizes that the judiciary plays a very important part in our three branches of government, but one that is limited one that exercises self-restraint uh, to say what the law is, not what it should be, leaving to the elected representatives of the people the job to say what the law is, along with the time-honored right that every American citizen has to throw the rascals out if they don't do uh, what we want them to do, uh, which is the way it, I think it's supposed to work. Well. We've got, uh, we've, we've got some very uh, big challenges, as you know, in, in, in Washington uh, these days. Uh, President Obama has now nominated and seen confirmed three uh, judicial nominees. And I uh, expect that the pace is going to pick up here considerably. Uh, we spent a lot of time on Judge Sotomayor's uh, nomination. And, uh, it's really in a, a unique situation, at least for the six and a half years I've been in the Senate, because right now the president obviously gets to make the nominations. The Democrats have a filibuster-proof uh, Senate. Uh, I would say I was one of those who said that I thought the requirement of a 60-vote threshold for confirming judicial nominees, uh, to me, uh, conflicted with the constitutional uh, requirement of the majority vote for judicial confirmations and struck me as, as just uh, unconstitutional to require a 60-vote threshold by Senate rules that was not contemplated in the Constitution when it came to the role of advice and consent. So even if Republicans had more numbers, even if we could block a nomination by a filibuster, I don't believe uh, you would see a filibuster. I, would, I could be wrong. We'll see how things develop. But my position is it's, uh, it's not uh, an appropriate standard. Well, I mentioned Judge Sotomayor and her confirmation of the Supreme Court. There's Judge uh, Lynch, uh, confirmed to the Second Circuit, and uh, Judge Jeffrey uh, Vitkin to the District Court for the District of South Dakota. It's really kind of strange that there have only been three uh, in the nine or so, ten months now that the Obama administration has been in charge, but uh, as I said, I expect the pace will pick up uh, considerably. If President Obama serves two full terms in the, uh, as President of the United States, he could well replace uh, half of the federal judiciary in eight years. Even if he only serves one term, he very likely will uh, nominate judges to serve two vacancies on the Supreme Court of the United States. So he will be in a position to have a big influence on the kinds of judges who serve in our federal judiciary. Of course, uh, people looking to where the president's philosophy towards the judiciary comes from have to start, I think, with his actions as a United States senator himself. As a senator, he voted against uh, Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Alito in their confirmation. Two individuals, I believe, who were among the finest additions to the Supreme Court uh, we've seen in a long time. My concern is also in what the President said about what his standard for a judicial nominee should be. When he said that judges should look beyond the law to uh, the judge's personal values, core concerns, and empathy. Of course, we all recognize these as code words for some deciding cases based on something other than the written word and based on what the legislature intended and what the Constitution itself says. He also said that uh, a critical ingredient to what judges should, uh, to, to uh, any judge that he might uh, confirm or as a senator or nominate as a president is what's in the judge's heart. Well, I want to make a few observations about some of his judicial nominations uh, that I think tend to reflect that his views he expressed as a senator about the standard for judicial nominees has been reflected in the nominees that he has proposed so far. And um, I'll start with Harold Coe. 